about your catalogue, the catalogue of spiders of the world, and it began when? I started working in 1986. Uh, we did scan uh, Brignoli's catalogue, and we acquired that, uh, the OCR worked pretty well for that. Um, then when it came to do the big job, which was Rogers' catalogue, we tried several different OCR systems. None of them produced acceptable results, so we took the old-fashioned way and we got a volunteer and over the next couple of years that volunteer typed um, everything into it, into it. Yeah. amazing, amazing. amazing. Yeah. Uh, one of our division secretaries Pete Rooster who's an excellent typist did some of the work as well um, when she had you know one of those rare occasions when she didn't have anything else to do in a sense the decision had been made for me by Brignoli because when Brignoli decided to do his first update in the catalog he adopted Roybert's uh, style uh, and it's obvious why he did that. He was a working taxonomist. And for a working taxonomist, Roger gives you quick access to exactly what you want to know. Yeah. And so that seemed to be the way to go. Yeah. When I first started work on the catalog in 1986, we had just acquired basically um, Xyrite, uh, which is, uh, in my view, still the best word processing program that's been written. Uh, unfortunately, it works only in DOS. Um, there is a sort of third cousin twice removed that's available for the Windows world called no to many but it's been customized for use in the humanities um, and so I use it on occasion and in a pinch that's what I would have to do but uh, there is simply no way to produce a catalog using tools like Microsoft Word it's not possible it's not one catalog it's it's like 26 files plus the bibliography. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. So there are about 40 or 50 files all together. Yeah, yeah. And the and the order of the uh, families is is roughly phylogenetic. Is that what? Yes. So that it, there isn't. It, and it changes periodically. Yes. It's quite dramatically in some cases. Learn something more about the relationships of particular groups. Or yeah, or a family disappears. Yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, obviously, there is no way to translate phylogeny directly into a single linear unambiguous uh, listing, but it does roughly follow the relationships. Um, you're a very, very busy man. <laughs> How do you, you get all this stuff done? When do you do the catalog? Uh, well, the catalog is done basically in, in off hours. It's, it's not something I sit here in the office and do. In fact, I, the only thing I do here in the office is um, I have to check original literature. I can't do any other way than physically um, looking at the things. Everything else is done either at home or on the train. And, and, and how do you know about the literature? I mean, you, you don't rely on people just sending it to you. Well, that, it is important that people send things to me because I often find out about things first that way. But these days, um, uh, the electronic notice of notifications work pretty well. Um, I routinely check things like Zotaxa and Zokeys, where lots of stuff is published. Um, in the old days, you had to wait a year to get an issue with a zoological record and then see what they found that you hadn't. Now, all the zoological record online is updated once a month, and so once a month, I check those listings. So it's a record, not, not, but not just a record. Not just a record. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I use the, uh, the, the, the news feed from uh, Woods Hole uh, that sends me lists of, of everything they see that's published on Arachnid spiders. The problem is is that it's, it's done by a computer so it's very dumb. And the 
because we have a spider named Archaea, and they're also all half the microbes in the world. Are I get all those microbial mm -hmm. papers, in which right. I have only tangential interest, but, mm. uh, but I do occasionally find things. Uh, so it's a sifting true. process, even if, with the scanning system. Well, the same is true with, with zoological records. Zoological record includes lots of titles that don't that aren't relevant to the catalog. Yeah, yeah, and and you you've always you followed. Um, River and, and Brignoli in a number of specific aspects, for example, that you're carrying the, the sexes. Yes. Um, but you only, the, 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 the qualifying reason for something to appear in the catalogue is that? Well, there has to be a taxonomic novelty, a new description of a species, obviously, a transfer, a synonymy, or um, a description that's important for a working taxonomist, and by important, that translates pretty directly into illustrations of genitalia, um, because that's what we use. That's our stock in trade. Yeah, yeah, and and you know when you so so that that's the significant thing here is I think that the um, the, the sexes are, are, are leading the line. Yes. Right. So that we, we know what's important. I mean, yeah. The other thing that. Um, people ask a lot about is the, the distributions and unlike some catalogues you don't actually carry the distribution against each entry. That's correct. We don't, we don't have a matrix, a huge matrix with 42,000 species on one side and 165 nations on the other and little X's mark. No. Uh, if someone wants to do that work, more power to them, um, but not me. And, and am I correct in understanding that the order of a, of a distribution is usually from uh, west to east, is it right? Or uh, and north to south? Or yes, definitely yeah. north to south, and usually yes, west to east. Yes. And and I mean the the maintenance of, for example, Australia as states is it part of the historical thing, or or is it because of area? Or? It's it's primarily a matter of area. Uh, Australia by itself is is too large. Uh, the states of Australia are pretty much perfect uh, for use in the catalogue. In the U.S., we don't we don't do that because the states are too small. The purpose of the catalogue is not to try and track every every momentary change in distribution. Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah can't, so we can't possibly do that because I, I don't even cite all the relevant literature. No. There, 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 there are oftentimes faunistic papers published that might have 200 records. I go through and check those records to see is this a new record for you know Lower Slavia. No. And 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 the thing is that in should anybody in the future decide to go back and dissect them, it would be a massive task. All you would have to go back to the original literature, yeah. all of the, yeah. the yeah. entire, and way more literature than is in my bibliography. Yes, yes, because it's already some. And of course, the case. question becomes how valuable the information is, because identifications that are that are published in faunistic studies that are based on historical visionary studies are wrong as often as they're right. So, taking all that information at face value, you will get nowhere. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, on on that. There are a number of places in the catalogue where you, you make an ex-cathedra decision. Yes. Um, and some places the species disappear before they, they're still born in yes. the catalogue. Um, yes. And these are decisions because of they're in your group, right. your group, group that you know and understand. Right. Um, and, and that's the reason that you make those decisions. There are very few examples of that, actually. Um, by and large, I like catalogue the literature as a literature catalogue, not as it were, not as yeah. my opinions about it. Yeah, yeah. But there are some cases that are so obvious and so flagrant that yeah. uh, it would be silly to follow them. Yeah. And, I mean, in a lot of the cases with these kind of things, that um, it, it is, and, and this is one of the reasons I'm interviewing you, because you're the cataloger, and, it, and, it, and it's your, both your understanding, refined understanding of the code right. and of the final outputs and how they interact. That, that's important in the in, in the final analysis. Everything is subjective. Of course, where people there are over five thousand nine fields, I think, out there. I'd have to check. It's it's probably it's close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are over five thousand softists. It's probably not quite that that many of the um, well, There is no no doubt that I mean, particularly in, in that particular family, there is an incredible minutia. Um, they had no statistically effective generic level classification in the fields, and therefore everything is largely random. Um, you have dozens and dozens and dozens of monotypic genera, about which, all of which are, in essence, statements of total ignorance about the relationships of the taxa. 
but the, the what I'm thinking about is you know, know that there is we see we're seeing now more single species papers. Yes, uh, I personally, I mean, I for example, as a reviewer, I now decline to even look at manuscripts that uh, involve only isolated descriptions in groups that haven't been recently revised. I don't believe it's a worthwhile activity. Yeah, yeah. And, and likewise with monotypic genera? Or well, they're... Um, if they're out of context. If they're out of context, exactly. Yeah. You, the fact is you cannot publish <coughs> a legitimate argument for establishing a monotypic genus looking only at that genus. You can't. It's, it's not possible no. by definition. No. You have to show that its relationships are such that it is not a subgroup of any currently named taxon. And of course, many people don't follow that very 